Scientists from around the world have been renewing their calls to fight climate change with increasing urgency. A United Nations report from last summer warns that preventing an extra degree of global warming could make a, quote, life or death difference. The report states that in order to keep any semblance of the ecosystems we currently enjoy, carbon dioxide emissions would need to be cut in half by 2030. But some scientists argue consumer focus is misplaced when it comes to cutting down on those emissions. In honor of Earth Day, CBS News took a look at some of the most common myths about reducing carbon footprints and some of their climate-friendly alternatives. CBS News Money Watch reporter Arena Ivanova joins me now to talk about all of this. Arena, thank you so much for bringing in some positive knowledge, I assume, is what we're about to hear. Here wow. So let's mixed see. Bag. All right, let's, let's see how we go. <laughs> One of the things um, that you talk about is food. This is everyone's favorite topic, but you note that climate change is not a reason to eat locally raised beef. Why, why is that, and what's the alternative? That's right. So eating local is one of those things that's, it has a lot of things going for it. It's great for many reasons, but climate change is not one of them. It turns out that where your food comes from uh, in terms of its carbon footprint is a lot less important than what that food actually is. Okay. And so when we look at the most carbon intensive foods, beef is right at the top of that list. It takes something like seven pounds of grain to create one pound of cow. Uh, it's very, very carbon inefficient. Uh, and so scientists say, you know, if you're going to change one thing about what you eat to improve your carbon footprint, uh, cut out the beef uh, if you've done that, you know cut out the meat uh, and, and dairy products if you can. And obviously, you know, you can cut down instead of cut out. Right. And for those who are like, I got to get my protein. Look, there are <laughs> plant-based proteins that wouldn't be as CO2 intensive, correct? Absolutely. A plant-based diet, plant-based proteins are also better for you uh, in many ways from a health perspective. So okay. uh, we can think about it as a win-win. As a now, one of the, the growing shopping trends is to use one of these cotton bags or tote bags instead of the, the single-use plastic bags that, that are so widely available. What, what are scientists telling us about this? So plastic bags are one of those things that are really terrible, we can agree, from a number of perspectives. But again, if you're looking at the carbon footprint, it turns out that cotton, the cotton tote, is much more carbon intensive. The plastic bag, if you're only looking at the carbon, uh -huh. is actually the best choice because it's very light. Whoa! Uh, there's not a lot of waste when you produce it because it's it's made from petroleum, and so it's very expensive, and we tend to be very precious about not wasting any. Uh, and it, it holds a lot of food for the weight. So if I'm out at, like, a Trader Joe's-type place <laughs> with my Save the Earth <laughs> tote bag, you would walk up to me and say, excuse me, mister, this ain't CO2 neutral. <laughs> well, not exactly. I would <laughs> hope that you have had that tote bag for years and intend on using it and reusing it until it falls apart. That is what most so, people will say is the best thing to do from a carbon point of view. Just so definitely have a reusable bag for your shopping. But Absolutely. The tote isn't necessarily bag on bag saving you the CO2. Right. Footprint. Or don't, you know, don't buy a new tote thinking like, oh, this will be great. Just look at what you have in your house. If you have a pile of bald up plastic bags, you can reuse those. You know, and nobody says have they have to funny, be. funny, big, you know, <laughs> Franken bag of plastic bags. <laughs> bags in our homes. Several. <laughs> okay. Guilty as well. I want to move on to homes now because the energy used to heat and cool buildings is a major contributor to, to climate change. What about weatherproofing your home? Is that an efficient way to help or not? Well, again, it depends on where you're coming from. If yeah. you live in a house and you know you're you're going to be in that house for a while and you're thinking, what can I do to make it better, then absolutely. Uh, actually, making it more insulated to prevent, you know, loss of hot and cold air is really good for its uh, for the environment, for your carbon emissions, and also for your energy bill. You know, you'll mm -hmm. spend less to heat or cool your house. Um, but when I was researching this story, you know, a lot of people brought up the point that Look at the bigger picture and think about, do you have to live in a house at all, you know? Because when you look at the types of buildings we live in, often uh, an apartment in an apartment building is a much, much more efficient way to live than in a single detached house, you know? And then uh, if you can, you know, 
see if you can live in a denser place uh, or see if you can, you know, live in a smaller house. Again, bigger houses tend to be less energy efficient. Yeah, I've seen all these tiny homes getting in their own TV shows. I'm not sure how common <laughs> that is. If you want to live in a shed, what's that about? Yeah, okay, yeah. Separate, separate segment. <laughs> um, now, with the weather warming up, folks are planning their vacations. So is there a, a mode of transportation, scientists say, is the best as far as not emitting the, the highest number of CO2? Well, the best is often something that will move a lot of people in one direction together. So if you're going long distances, something like a bus or a train, if that's an option, will usually be the best, uh, the best choice for you. But again, it depends. You know, flying has been getting a lot of attention lately for being, you know, such a carbon intensive way to travel. You know, planes create huge amounts of emissions. But if you're someone who's thinking, I'm not going to fly, you know, for my vacation, think about the alternative, you know. If your choices are flying across the country or driving alone cross country in an SUV, then in, in that scenario, you know, flying may actually be a more efficient uh, way to travel. Right, and you, you purposefully looked at some of the most popular um, ideas that people have as far as being green and a lot of these misconceptions, but it sounds like as we talk about all of this, your advice is a bit more big picture. Right. So what, what do you mm -hmm. say to people who are certainly interested, they think this is urgent and they want to do something, but they just get confused in all the details? Yeah, it's true. And it's incredibly confusing, you know, with environmental issues. There's really no one good answer. It's always and yeah. it depends on your situation. Um, you know, something that came up uh, as I talked to scientists is the biggest choice is that influence your carbon footprint are really the biggest life choices. It's, you know, what we eat, uh, where we live, how we get around, and how big a family we have. Um, that's why it's it's hard to talk about this stuff sometimes. You know, we don't, yeah. we don't necessarily want to confront those uh, big questions, and it's easier to think about, you know, well, paper or, or plastic. Um, right. But the flip side of that, you know, I was speaking with one scientist from the Union of Concerned Scientists, and he told me it's easier to make a good decision once. So let's think about it from that perspective. You know, if you're thinking about where to live, just think think about it hard and then right. you know see make the best choice you can at that point if you're a person who drives get the most fuel efficient car you can or an electric car if you can you know and once you've made that decision that will take as much carbon off your footprint as maybe you know carpooling once a week for years in a less efficient car. Yeah, well, it's, it's great that people are considering this and they're starting to kind of change ways in their lives to kind of have a, a smaller CO2 footprint. And for anyone confused, they can head to cbsnews.com and check out your article. Uh, Arena Ivanova, thank you so much. Thank you Appreciate for having it. me.